Hi everyone, I'm Pat from the Sewing Studio Fabric Superstore and I'm back with an updated version of my super popular six step tote bag tutorial. We've updated the kits to include a longer strap and I wanted to put one together again step by step with you to show you just how easy and fun they are to make. Plus, if you stay with me till the end of the video, I have some tips and inspiration for you to further customize your tote bags. Let's get started. Step one, I'm going to show you how to measure and cut the pieces for your bag. So in front of me, I have a beautiful side of one of my bags. And this is what we call the theme fabric. This is the bottom of your bag, which is your vinyl, and this is the webbing for the straps. So let's go ahead and put this to one side, and I'm gonna start by showing you the measurements for your theme fabric or the top of your bag for both sides. When I'm done with this, I'm gonna show you and go over what comes in the kit so you understand what you're getting and how to cut it. Okay, so let's go back to this. Um, so in my theme fabric, you're gonna cut 18 inches wide. You're gonna cut two of these pieces. Remember, you have two sides to your bag. So you'll need two pieces that are 18 inches wide by 24 inches long. Once you've cut these two pieces out, you're going to take your 24 inch length and you're going to fold it in half and you're going to press it. By doing that, you can see that the beauty of this bag is that it's almost like a self-lined bag because you're doing the front and the back of the top of the bag in the same beautiful theme fabric. In other words, the fold up here is the finished top of your bag. So once you've cut your two pieces, one of the things you need to pay attention to is if you have a directional fabric. So always pay attention to that. And actually this one, uh, not, not really directional, but yes, in a way I see a stem coming up here. So if, if I was making this, I would choose this side as my right side because there is some direction. I like the strawberries going up. But again, just pay attention to the direction. Now, what is going to happen is that maybe you um, have a piece of fabric or you purchase a kit that is directional. Make sure that the direction of the print going up on the outside is your right side. On the inside, if the direction of your print is going down, it doesn't really matter. Nobody's going to notice. Okay, so I am going to show you how to fold your theme fabric um, from the fabric that you get in the kit. So let's go to the next step. You're going to get your vinyl, which is the bottom of your bag, and you're going to cut it so that it's 18 inches wide, the same width as your bag and five and a half inches in height. You're also gonna mark one and a half inches in your boxed corners. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips um, which will help you with the boxed corners, but I always start out with marking my boxed corners now. So, and again, you would need two of these because you have you need one for either side. So you can see that 18 inches matches up really well um, with the top width of my bag. Then you, in your kit, you're gonna get webbing. And we now in our kits that we sell here, put in three yards of webbing so you can customize the length of your webbing to how long you want it. This has been, the, the longer webbing that comes all the way down here, like I showed you, is, um, has been very popular in the store. And that's one of the things that we have updated in our kits is the length of the webbing. 
so you get exactly what you want and the bag that you want. So three yards of webbing in the kits now. And then you're also gonna get, let me just put this to one side. You're gonna get the fusible double-sided fleece in there. So you're gonna need to cut this. And this is gonna be inserted in the top of your bag inside your theme fabric. So, I like to cut my, my fusible fleece. Remember, it's double-sided, which means it's press-on. It'll glue to both sides when you sandwich it together. Um, but I like to cut it a little bit shorter. Remember, this is 12 inches here. I cut my batting just a little bit shorter so that when I attach the vinyl along the bottom, I don't have as much bulk in my seam allowance. So it makes it a little bit easier. I do keep it 18 inches wide. So those are the dimensions of my double-sided fusible fleece, 11 and a half by 18 inches wide. And you need two pieces, one for either side of the bag. Now let's go over what you get in your kit. We were talking about the webbing, so three yards of webbing in there. You get your vinyl. Now there is a piece, the vinyl, you will get enough vinyl in your kit to be able to cut the two bottoms and also you'll have enough left for you to play with. Um, see how much vinyl you get? So you'll have enough left for you to play with when it comes to maybe adding extra embellishment to your bag. And we're gonna go over that a little bit and I'll show you at the end of the video in the tips. So that's your vinyl. Here's your theme fabric. And then here is your batting. And I am going to show you how to fold and cut your fabric so that you ha it makes it very easy for you to make your bag. So I've taught several of these classes now, and that's one of the reasons that it's inspired me to do or to make a new updated video, because I've had questions about the bags, and I've um, seen in my classes what students may or may not understand. And so hopefully this video is going to make it easier for you. That's, that's my hope. So when you open up your theme fabric, this is what you're going to get in your kit. So this is your width going across. And then the fabric is um, two thirds of a yard. It's just a little bit over two thirds of a yard, which is you need 24 inches in height. So the easiest thing to do is I take it and I fold it in half lengthwise. Can you see what I just did? And basically what you're looking at now is the, the fold along the top is the top of my bag. And I am going to, can you see that? I'm going to um, press this. Let me just show you what I do first of all. When I fold it over, I like to line up, because I don't have a lot of extra fabric in this piece, I like to line up, I'm going to lay it here, I line up my selvage along here, and you'll notice that some of the um, fabrics now have beautiful, I'm just going to fold this a little bit more, have beautiful selvages. This actually is a rifle paper fabric. It's a nice canvas that has a nice body to it. It's one of our most popular um, collections in here. So line up your selvage, kind of gently press the fold, the top. And then I do the same on this side. I gently press it. And then what I do is, and I'm going to show you, is I take this and I press it well before I cut it. But you can see now how my, the top of my bag is coming together, right? So 
I'm going to show you now how I cut and press the top of my bag. Okay, so I cut my fusible fleece to eight two 18 inch wide pieces by 11 and a half and I pressed I folded and pressed my width of my fabric and now I have my two folded edges lined up along the top of my ruler can you see that and I also lined up my selvages here one on top of the other and so the first thing that I like to do is I like to take off, depending on the width of my selvage, I usually, see how wide this selvage is here? I usually take off um, at least an inch. So I'm gonna line up my ruler with my mat and I'm going to slice this off. Now, what might happen is that you might think at home, oh, well, I'm gonna take some off here and some off here. I like to take as little as possible off here so that to the, and then measure 18 inches across. And then this end here is on the fold. So I'm actually left with a sizable amount of fabric on the fold so I don't have as much waste. So let's, let me go ahead and cut this off here. Make sure that you um, put your folded top of your fabric straight along the line of your um, cutting mat. Okay, so I've got a beautiful clean line there. If you're a salvage collector, which a lot of people are, you can keep your salvages for your next salvage project. I'm gonna keep going here. I'm gonna look for my 18 inch mark on my ruler. So what I do is I measure across 18 inches and I find my line here and I'm going to go ahead and line up my ruler. And so I have 18 inches across here and I'm going to cut. Okay. Remember I told you this is a nice, um, weight of canvas. It's heavier than a regular cotton. So you can see now that the piece that I sliced off, I had on the fold. And at the end of the video, this is one of the tips that I'm going to give you what to do with um, your length, nice length of fabric that you just sliced off. Okay, so now in front of me, I have two pieces, both sides of my bag, perfectly cut. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I'm gonna turn it this way because I wanna even off my bottom. So I line up my edges of both my pieces and then I am going to, you wanna measure 12 inches down. You measure it with your ruler or you can, so 12 inches brings me to this marker. So now I'm gonna line up my ruler. See how easy this is? And often you would want to use the lines on your ruler as a guideline. You can see here that the edge is matching up perfectly. Okay, so let's get that bottom edge cleaned up. And so now um, I'm going to, I've got both of my theme fabrics cut to size. So then the next thing I want to do is work on my vinyl. I'm going to open it up and cut it individually. So I need 18 inches by five and a half inches. So normally what I do is I'll line up the edge of my vinyl, measure in 18 inches. Let me take those out of the way. Let me put this up a little bit higher. Okay, so measure 18 inches, find your line. Cut my first 18 inches, and as you can see, this is a little crooked, but that's okay, because I'm gonna straighten it all out. I need two pieces. Line this up. Doesn't, 
and line this up so I know this edge is straight. I'm going to measure 18 inches in. Brings me to this line. So I'm going to... I have my way of cutting. I've cut so many of these bags now. And now I need to measure five and a half inches. So I'm again going to line this up here, straighten off this end. And then I'm going to, um, actually I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to use the lines on my ruler. So this ruler um, is my favorite ruler. It's Quilter Select. It's six inches by um, 24 inches long. It just works for me and the projects that I do. So you can see now I'm using my ruler to measure. So this is six inches. I need my vinyl to be five and a half. So I'm coming to my five and a half inch point and I'm lining up the edge of my vinyl and then I can slice this off. Now, you know, also, if you want your vinyl to be wider or higher, taller, um, you can make it six inches or seven inches. It's up to you. This is kind of like a create your own tote bag. Okay, so now I have my two 18 inch by five and a half inch pieces um, for the bottom of my bag. So the next thing that I would do is I would turn it over and I would take my ruler and take a marking pen um, and I use the lines on my ruler and line this up. This is one inch. This is one and a half inch. Now, again, if you wanted um, a bigger boxed corner, um, you could make it two inches if you wanted. Okay, so I have the two bottoms of my bag cut out now, my two tops. The only th other thing that I would need to, uh, and I have my batting somewhere, I have my fusible batting cut, and I'm gonna show you how to use the batting and to press it rather than iron it. Step two, we're gonna construct the top of the bag, and we're gonna start by pressing in the batting into your themed fabric here. So you can see that I have pressed the top and there's my fold line. It shows clearly up there. So I'm going to take my double-sided fusible batting and insert it so it goes all the way to the top. Then I'm going to come over here, bring this down. And this is very important. Um, there's a difference between pressing and ironing. And so right now, what we're going to do is press as opposed to iron. But you're going to start out by making sure, you see how my batting is a little bit shorter than my actual fabric to reduce the bulk? I'm going to start off by bringing this corner down and matching up my corner to corner with my other side. Can you see that? I've got it matched up. What I don't want to do, what I don't want to do is put my iron down and start just ironing because fabric stretches, batting stretches, and all of a sudden I could, I could have a distorted top of my bag in seconds. And I know this because again, I've taught classes and the general tendency is, oh, I'm going to iron it quick and all of a sudden you can fix that if you unsquare it, so to speak. You can fix it by cutting your um, fabric down a little bit. But the best thing is, is to start out on the right foot so you don't have to fix anything. So match up your corners, pick a corner. I always start 
on the left side. Then I take a hot iron and I press. I don't iron, I press. And I make sure that this corner is now holding before I move forward. So once I've done this, the next thing I do is I do the other corner. You see how nicely my corners are lined up here? And then I take my iron and I press. Make sure it's nice and flat. I can feel that my batting is all the way up into my fold here. And now I'm pressing so that my corners fuse. So this batting is heavy. Um, so it takes a little bit to press it, to fuse it. And you can see now that I'm lining up my edges and I'm going along my edges, pressing as opposed to ironing. I, I can't reinforce that enough to you that you don't want to sh have your fabric shift all over the place. The other thing you might consider, I, I'm using a June Taylor um, pressing mat here. They've been around for years, very popular. If you're using, now you see how I'm gently ironing and now I'm ironing in an upward position because I know that this is holding. Remember, it's double-sided, fusible fleece. So I'm gonna turn it over very gently. Now that I've got the top of my bag fused, you can see what a nice construction it is now. It's got a lot of body to it. But I could leave this like this if I wanted to, but I always look at this as a blank canvas to embellish just a little bit more. It's kind of nice to have some fun with what you're creating, right? So as I say, if you wanted, you could quilt it. I have some samples over here that I'm gonna show you to inspire you with ideas of what you could do. Um, I'm gonna start by talking about yarn. Those of you who know me know that I like to embellish with yarn. I like to couch in the embroidery machine. I also like to couch with my walking foot. So let's talk about the walking foot here. I have a piece started here that I wanted to show you. This is very, very, very pretty print. So I have yarn in front of me. And what I do is that I have, I like to buy variegated yarn because um, I like to have it on hand. So I probably have 10 or 12 different variegated combinations of yarn. And when I'm looking at one of these pieces to embellish or one of the tops of my bags, I might start by throwing a piece of, you know, variegated yarn and looking at, you know, what works for me, that doesn't work, it worked well with this one. This would work, so it's a possibility I could couch it down. This one also works. It, all, it always amazes me how sometimes you think, no, that's not going to work. It's got a bit of blue, but when you actually couch it down, it does, it does work really nice. It's a really nice embellishment. So all I would do is take my ruler, decide how far apart I want to space my lines, mark them off maybe with a chalk line. And generally, the larger the design of my fabric, the larger the square that I couch. If it's a smaller design, I may couch them one inch apart. This one that I have in front of me actually is about three inches apart. And it, when I start couching, never start from up here because you're gonna have yarn hanging off the edge, right? So you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna start couching here and have to deal with yarn tails. So always start off to the side and then this, um, the yarn tail will be concealed. It'll be stitched into your side seams. So always from side to side first is how I do it. And then I come back and I couch up 
And when I get to the top, you can see that I actually use my lift and pivot and I pivot and I stitch yarn along the top and then I come down. So again, my raw ends of my yarn are hanging down be below and not on the top of my bag. Sometimes when you look at the print, the print actually tells you what to do is the way I look at it. So I actually just quilted, I followed the lines. This is one printed piece of fabric and we did half kits for this. Um, uh, I think they're sold out at the moment and we're trying to get more, but you can actually follow the lines of your print if you're not feeling too creative. Here's another one that's just like a printed quilt block. You can just follow the lines and quilt it down and then you can add, I added a crisscross there just because I enjoy um, quilting. Another couple of ideas here before we move on to the next step. This is one of our new ones here and this here is stippled and I actually threw this into my embroidery machine. Can you see the stippling? I did this in my embroidery machine in my luminaire and you can see that I added some decorative stitching to that. And this one here is one of my, is actually the latest bag. And you can see I also did stippling on this. Can you see? But the stippling is much larger. Step three, we're gonna place and stitch down our straps. So in your kit, if you purchase a kit from us, there's three yards of webbing in there. So I went ahead and cut my webbing into two 42 inch long straps because I'm going to stitch down um, long straps. So once you do that, you're left with a piece of webbing here, which I'm going to talk about in a minute because you will be able to use this if you want um, later on. Okay, so let me start off here. So I have my, the top of one of the sides of my bag in front of me. This is the time where you would look at the top of your bag, look at your print and make sure that if it's directional, that you're working on the correct side of your bag. Okay, so I have lined up my top folded part. This is fused and ready to go with the line on my cutting mat. So I can tell it's nice and straight. And then I lined up the edge here with the line on my cutting mat. Okay, so it's 18 inches in width. So I'm looking for my center point. Half of 18 is nine inches. So I am going to get my six inch ruler and half of six inches is three inches. So I'm going to go one, two, three, center of my ruler. I'm going to lay it on my nine inch line. Nine inches being half of 18 and three inches to the center on the nine inch. I hope everybody follows that. Um, so I line it up with the top and with the bottom. I'm lining it up with the lines on my ruler, on my mat, I'm sorry. Okay, so I know I am perfect. The other thing that I like to do, because I'm a double checker, and I told you this before, is I like to use the line on my ruler and I line it up on the top of my bag. So I know I'm pretty perfect right now. Everything's hunky-dory. Okay, so I use this ruler works really, really well and makes this job really easy. So you can see now that I can, the spacing that I leave between my webbing is six inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place my webbing, just you, all you need to do is butt it up to the edge of your ruler and it falls into perfect place. But before I go to stitch it down, I take my craft tape. Um, so probably, most of you sewers have used a double-sided sticky tape. There's different brands that you can get. So I have the quarter inch width in my hand. Clover also has one that looks like this. 
and it's super sticky and it is, um, it's called double-sided basting tape and it's a half inch wide. So now what I'm gonna do, because I hate trying to push a pin through um, webbing and all this thickness. So normally I leave about a quarter inch between the edge of my ruler and I stick down, kind of run down here, press it. I leave about a half an inch from the top of my bag before I start pressing down my um, craft tape. And then I'm gonna peel. And sometimes this can be a little tricky getting it to start off. Let's see here. And this is a new roll, and that's why that little marker came up. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull it off. See how easy that is? And then I am gonna take, make sure you haven't bumped your ruler. And that's why I like to keep my bag on this mat and this lined up, because it keeps me perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna put take my webbing and butt it up to the edge of the ruler, stick it down, and then I'm gonna take it and come to the other side and just repeat the process. And obviously you're gonna do this to both sides of your bag. Sometimes I find, can you see here how I ran the edge of the tape just off my fabric and onto my cutting mat and it sticks really well to my cutting mat and so immediately it peels off. Sometimes it's on fabric that you have a little bit of trouble. Okay, so that's my second piece. Now this is very important. Um, make sure that your strap is not twisted on top. In other words, don't have it twisted like this, make sure that it's in the right direction. And now I can slide my ruler away carefully and it's, you would gently now take it over to your sewing machine and run up the edge on your sewing machine and then across the top I usually run it about, I use my lift and pivot on my machine, then I run across the top about a quarter of an inch down from my top edge and then down this edge. Um, and usually the color, everybody always says, what color thread do I need? And my answer always is, I like to use the color of the thread that matches the webbing. Because if I had a natural colored thread, I don't know that it would look so nice to stitch it down on my green webbing. So I usually say the color of the webbing dictates the color of the thread. Of course, later on, if you're working on your vinyl, you may want to change the color of your thread to another color. Now let's sew the straps.
Step four, we're gonna stitch the bottom of the bag to the top of the bag. Now that I have my strap stitched on, now is the time where you want to check and make sure that the top of your bag is perfect or hasn't um, moved or stretched. If you were to quilt this bag, sometimes what it can do is that it can shrink or pull your fabric in a little bit or even putting your straps on. So make sure, I always like to double check and you can see I'm using my um, June Taylor, the flip and fold here. So I have it on the measurement or cutting side. And you can see here, it's actually really handy um, when making this bag because I can see right away my measurement of 18 inch. So I have my top of my bag and you can see that it looks really nice. Now, let's measure it up. This is the bottom of my bag and I would be stitching, not this, but this side to my bag here. So I wanna line it up and make sure that they're still the same width. So when I sew it on, I don't have anything left hanging over the edge. And you'll also notice at this point that I have not yet cut out my box corner, so to speak, or my square out of here. And there's a reason why I do that at this point rather than sooner. Can you see that when I lay this on top here, when I cut my vinyl, it's slightly longer here. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I am actually gonna trim that up. Just take off that little bit. It was about a quarter of an inch. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. And remember to check, you have two sides to this bag. So you'll wanna check the other side too because both sides need to match and be the same length. Okay. So now I'm gonna come back here and now it lines up perfect. Can you see that? I'm lined up perfect, perfect. Okay, however, what you need to look at now is I took a quarter of an inch off of here. So when I come back to measure here, this actually only measures one and a quarter inches. So I have to bump my measurement down of my boxing, just move it down just a little bit. And it's very easy to do. You can see this is the one and a half inch box. So again, because I took off a little bit here, I'm moving that down. At this point, I can now cut my corners off because I know it's perfect, and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch my bottom to my top. This also would be the point where if you wanna add a bit of trim, you would insert it or pin it here. And now you're gonna lay the bottom of your bang, the vinyl, on top of the trim and the top of your bag. And then I'm gonna use some clips to hold it together. If you like, when you're um, laying your trim down, you could use a little bit of your double-sided sticky tape. It holds really well and helps to not use pins. Okay, so now I have this clipped on and I know that everything is perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my corners. And once I've done this, I'm ready to sew this side. But remember that I also need to do the same thing to the other sides. So now it's ready to sew. Normally, I use about a half inch seam allowance. I've got my clover clips. So about a half an inch seam allowance, you wanna make sure that it's wide enough that it's catching everything under the needle. Um, and I usually have a stitch length of about three.
so I have it it's both sides stitched together. Now I would need to come back and I have a bit of a, my, my trim needs to be stitched down, so I would just come back. Now I'm ready to do my top stitching either on my vinyl or on my bag, whatever you're more comfortable with. Sometimes if the vinyl is very tricky or um, very shiny, it, you may have a little bit of an issue and you may need to change to a Teflon foot. So it's up to you um, how straight of a sewer you are too. When I top stitch on vinyl, it's going to be noticeable, especially when I'm using dark green thread because I want my top stitching to show. So it's up to you which way where you want to top stitch. But what you do need to do is this is my seam allowance in here. I'm going to swing it in the direction of my top stitching so that my top stitching stitches down my seam allowance nicely. And as I take this through the machine, I'm actually going to stitch on the vinyl. Um, I have, I'm going to just use a straight stitch. I have my stitch length at three. I don't need a Teflon foot for this particular vinyl. So I'm going to swing my seam allowance this way and I'm going to pat my vinyl down so that I know that it's laying nice and flat. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. If you find that your vinyl is sticking a little bit, which is it is at this point, really what you should do is test sewing on it first. Mine is doing fine, actually. It was just the beginning. So I'm going to keep going. But if you're not sure whether to use a vinyl foot or not, put your vinyl foot on and test on a piece of your um, fabric or your vinyl to make sure that you're not gonna have any trouble with the foot um, not moving. Okay, so you can see I am heading it down, kind of taming it. I'm just actually using a regular needle on this. I did not change my needle. If you do a lot of sewing on vinyl, Schmetz does have a fairly new needle for vinyl and we get it's been very popular. We have gotten very good reviews on it. So you might um, think about using a vinyl needle. Okay. So now we're on step five. We're gonna stitch the edges together of our bag, the bottoms, and we're gonna box the corners. I put my um, bag right sides together. So I have it set up ready to put under my sewing machine. I'm going to do, I'm going to stitch at about a half an inch again, my seam allowance on the side. Um, now what I want to show you is I want the top of my bag to match up nicely as I do my side seams. So what you can do if you like, I have a piece of double-sided sticky tape here. I'm gonna peel it off and I am going to line up the edges of the top edge of my bag. See, I've got it right sides together. And I've also, I'm gonna put a clip in here just to hold that together. I also put some double-sided sticky tape here because I want all of these seams to line up and look nice. So I'm gonna peel that off. I'm gonna make sure that they line up my vinyl seam and my trim seam, and I'm gonna stick it down, and then I just put a clip to help 
hold it together. And then I'm going to start sewing. Now you'll notice too, I changed the color of my thread. I had dark green on before because I did the stitch, the contrasting stitch on my, my top stitching on my vinyl. So I changed the color of my thread. Make sure that you reinforce your top of your bag as you start stitching. Love, love, love the clips and I love, love, love the tape. So I have my sides stitched together, my bottoms, my bottoms stitched together, and now I'm gonna box my corners. So I'm going to, do you see how I put my fingers in there, opened it up, and I'm giving it a little tug and I, what I want to do is line up my side seam allowance with the bottom of the bag. And then I'm going to take it and I'm going to flip it. I like to sew on from this side. So I just need to flatten it out a little bit, line up my seam allowance again. Here we go. Okay. And then the other thing is I like to, I have two seam allowances here. I like to press one in one direction and then the other one in the other direction so that I don't have a lot of bulk. So once I have it tamed under my foot, I'm going to put my presser foot down and I've kept my stitch length at three. I'm gonna use my reverse reinforce and I'm gonna stitch across, again, about a half an inch. Make sure that it's nice and flat and then just stitch across. And I'm gonna repeat the same thing for the other side. If you find, or if you're making a bag that you feel is gonna have a lot of stress on it or be used a lot, to reinforce this, you could come back and sew another line of stitching on the inside here. So you would have a really strong boxed corners. Step six, turn your bag inside out and start your next one. Okay, now I'm gonna share some tips with you in this updated version of the six step tote bag. So let's get started here. In the beginning, when, I, when we cut our theme fabric, I told you to leave the piece of fabric on the end, on the fold, and when you open it up, you have a nice chunk of fabric left. So I decided that what you, one of the things that you could do with this is make a pocket. So I made a couple of pockets here. Remember, it's your creation, so you can customize the pocket to whatever size you want. And when you're laying down your webbing, you could take your webbing, place, place your pocket in the center, line it up, with the center of um, your ruler, like we did in the beginning, and take your webbing and place your webbing over it. So when, when you stitch your webbing down, you're actually adding a pocket in here. And of course, you're gonna line up the bottom of your pocket here with the edge of the bottom of your themed fabric. And you can see here that I actually used my decorative stitching on my sewing machine to add some decorative stitching. So that was another tip that I wanted to give you. Embellish your webbing if you want. 
Okay, so I have two different sizes so you could customize it for your cell phone or for your glasses. If you want a smaller one, you could put one on either side if you wanted. So that's one good tip that I have for you. Now, this piece of webbing that I have in my hand that I did some decorative stitching on, also in the beginning of the video, I told you you're gonna get in your kit three yards of webbing. So after we cut the proper length that we wanted for the long straps, this is, I had a piece left over and so, that's what I did my decorative stitching on. So at this point, what you could also do is add this piece of webbing to the top. You could line it up here and stitch it on. Or if you feel like, I always say that everything is fixable. So if you were to have stitched some top stitching along here and you didn't do a very good job, just say, um, you could come back with your webbing and stitch your webbing on top and cover any mistakes you may have made. Now, you'll only have enough webbing left from the three yard piece to do one side, but I, that doesn't really matter. Now your bag could have a front. Just embellish one side of it. When you go to sew your um, strapping on or your webbing, I tell you to make sure that you don't twist your strap. So guess what I did? Because I'm human, right? I twisted it accidentally and I had already, you know, done all my stitching. So I was a little devastated, but I decided that I was going to fix it because why not? So what I did was I took my webbing that was twisted like this and I cut it, I stitched it back together and I stitched a piece of vinyl over it. And so now I have an additional detail on my shoulder that actually came out really nice. And actually I never would have thought of doing before, but I really like how it came out. You can cut different shapes out of your vinyl that you have left over and keep embellishing if you like. I have another bag here. This one has been very popular um, and you can see that I did the short straps. This is one of my original bags um, that I made a while back. But you can see here that I cut, I looked at my design on here and I cut leaves instead of just having a square shape here, which you can do. A lot of my bags have squares. Um, you can actually pull from the pattern or the print of your fabric and cr be creative. I did some top stitching. I cut my leaves, top stitched with a contrasting thread, and then I glued my vinyl shapes down with E6000. So you can, when you're adding vinyl ends, so to speak, to your webbing, you can stitch it down if you want. But if you want to get creative with a shape, maybe this one here, see how pretty that looks? All I do is I take my vinyl and I draw on the back, cut it out, and then I take my E6000 and I very carefully, you don't want to use a lot of it, I very carefully squeeze it out, make sure it goes all around the edge, and then put a little bit in the center and then I just very carefully stick it on and E6000 glues it really well so now I don't have to sew all around the edge because it could, that can be a little tricky doing that kind of stop, top stitching. So with your leftover vinyl from your kit, play with it a little bit, cut shapes. Maybe you would like to do something like that. So get creative. Or actually, this is one of the ones that I did. I quilted together in my embroidery hoop. But I decided that I wanted to do something down here too. So I did two rows very, very close together with a contrasting thread of top stitching. 
because I, I just wanted to add something down here and I'm actually quite happy with how it came out. I love this. It's always nice to add a little embellishment in the seam. You don't have to, but it, it, it adds a lot to it. When I go to finish my bag, you can either surge the edges like I have here. I have it surged. If you don't have a serger, you can just um, finish your edges with a zigzag stitch. But either way, this is a quick and easy bag to make. So your finished, your edges are going to show in here. So what I recommend that you do so that they, nothing comes unraveled is before, let me go back here. See how I've got my serger tail up here. Before I trim that down, I use fray check. So I'll just put a couple of two or three drops of fray check on the end there. I let it dry and then I trim it. This is like a, it's a liquid sealant. So it works really, really well for fraying and certainly for surging, um, for the end of surging tails, so to speak. Thank you for watching my updated six step tote bag tutorial. I hope you feel inspired and ready to make your own tote bags at home. We have a bunch of different kits pre-made for you in store or on our website. So you can make your own six step tote bags at home. But remember, you can also follow my supply list instructions to make your own fabric combinations for your bags. All of our tote bag kits are linked in the description of this video. Happy sewing.